Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mathun. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to build a linear regression model using Orange. Even before I demonstrate how to construct a linear regression model using Orange, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, like and share my videos. Firstly, what exactly do we mean by linear regression? Linear regression is a supervised learning technique. I repeat, linear regression is a supervised learning technique. When I say supervised learning technique, it means that we have a target variable or a dependent variable in this particular model. Secondly, a linear regression model has a scale dependent variable. Let me paraphrase this again. In the case of linear regression model, the dependent variable is scale. Lastly, the underlying engine that is used in a linear regression model is what is called as OLS or ordinary least squares model. Even before I construct a workflow in Orange, may I introduce you to the data set that I'll be working on today. So this is the data set that I'll be working on. As you can see here, this is the popular Boston housing data set. The very useful variables here. The first variable is the per capita crime rate by town. The second variable is the nitric oxide concentration, which is expressed in parts per 10 million. Nextly, I have the variable RM, which represents the average number of rooms per dwelling. You have the variable black, which represents the percentage of blacks by town. Nextly, you have the variable LSTAT, which stands for the percentage of lower status of the population. Like this, I have got 13 variables. The last variable is a very important variable. It is called as MEDV, which stands for the median value of owner occupied homes expressed in dollar thousands. So this is a variable which stands for median value of the owner occupied homes in dollar thousands. I propose to use this as the dependent variable. The remaining 13 variables will be used as the input variables or the independent variables when we construct the linear regression model in Orange. Now, let me go to Orange. This is the canvas of Orange wherein I'll be constructing the workflow. First, what I need to do is load the data set. To load the data set, we have the file widget. Let me right click and simply choose the file widget. I want to double click on the file widget. This is already pointing to the data set housing.tab. Now you can see here, a basic description is given of this particular file. It says data collected by the US census service concerning housing in Boston. What is the sample size in this data set? 506. How many features do we have in this data set? There are 13 features and there are no missing values. Hence, I do not uh, have to worry too much about cleaning the data. We can perform regression. This is popularly used for linear regression, so on and so forth. You can see the name of the variables, the type, by, uh, the, the type of the variable is displayed. Also, the role of the variable. I'm gonna use these variables as independent variables and hence, retain the option feature. So when I scroll down, you're going to see the last variable medv. This is the variable which I'm going to use as target. The 13 variables will be the feature and the 14th variable will be the target. Let me click on apply and close this particular window. Right now, what I've done is to load the data set in orange. What is the next step? The next step is to request Orange to display the data set. And to display the data set, I will right click and simply say data table. Let me establish a connection between file and data table. Double click on this. You can see here the entire file is displayed. Orange displays the target variable followed by the 13 input variables which we will be using to build a linear regression model. Let me go ahead and close this particular window. Great. What is the next step? The next step is to simply connect the file widget to what is called as the linear regression 
widget. So this is the linear regression widget. Let me connect the file widget to the linear regression widget. There are different parameters which you can tune in case you want to. You can specify the no regularization option, which is the default option that I will be using. You also have other options like L2 regularization or L1 regularization or the elastic net option. I'm not going to be using any of these regularization techniques in this particular video. I will go with the default option of no regularization. Let me close this particular window. The next thing that I want to do is, after fitting the linear regression model, I want to see the coefficients for each and every independent variable. To see the coefficients of each and every in, uh, independent variable, I can go ahead and choose the data table. Now I'm going to establish a connection between linear regression and the data table. Double click on this and you can see here what orange does is it displays the name of each and every input variable or the independent variable and the coefficients for each and every input variable. For example, the intercept term is 36.45. The per capita crime rate by town is minus 0 0.10, which actually makes sense because the negative sign says that if the crime rate increases, the median value of the housing price goes down. Then you have other input variables like NOx. This is a very interesting variable. NOx indicates the amount of pollution the level of nitric oxide concentration. So what this says is, if the level of nitric oxide concentration goes up by one unit, the median value of the house drops by 17 units. The last variable is interesting, LSTAT. We've already said that LSTAT stands for the percentage of lower status of the population. If the percentage of lower status of the population goes up by one unit, the median value of the housing price again drops down. One thing that we can do is we can sort the variables based on the coefficients or based on the coefficients value. So the top three drivers of this particular, this particular data set, this particular model would be the nitric oxide concentration followed by the variable distance. Now, what is this variable distance? It represents the weighted distance to five Boston employment centers. The third most important variable is PT ratio, which stands for pupil teacher ratio by town. So these are the three most important variables that drive the housing price of Boston. Let me close this. Okay. So we have built a linear regression model. We have generated the coefficients. What next? Any linear, any model, not just linear regression model, any machine learning model. After building a machine learning model, we have to assess the performance of the model. Is the performance good or is the performance poor? Now we have built a linear regression model. We would like to see whether the performance of this particular model is good or poor. Now to check the performance of the model, what I'm going to do is right click and choose the option test and score. Once I choose the option test and score, I have to establish a connection from the data set. There's one more connection which I'm having to establish from the linear regression option. So this is slightly different from the other, uh, from the other widgets. It will require two different input connections, one straight from the data set, second from the linear regression option. So this is how we are going to use the test and score. And to display the contents of test and score, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more widget here called as data table. Let me quickly establish a connection between test and score and data table. Double click on this. What you're seeing right now is nothing but the predicted value. So this is the actual value. This is the predicted value generated by the linear regression model. You can see here, the actual value for a particular case is seven. The predicted value is minus six. We still are not able to see 
the performance of the model. So what I'm going to do is close this particular window. In the test and score widget, let me double click. Now you're able to see the performance of the model. You can see here, there are four important metrics which Orange displays, which indicates the performance of the model. One is what is called as MSC, which stands for the mean square error. The mean square error in our case is 23.4. For a good model, the mean square error should be close to zero. The second important model performance indicator is what is called as Ramsey, root mean square error. Now, the Ramsey value that we are getting is 4.84. Ideally speaking, the RMSC value for a good model should be between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. I repeat, ideally speaking, for a good model, the RMSC value should be between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. Next is mean absolute error. This again should be zero for a good model. What I would like to do is pay attention to R square. R square stands for coefficient of determination. Coefficient of determination is a value which indicates whether the model fits the data well or not. This is a value which always lies between zero and one. If the value is close to one, it means that the model fits the data. On the other hand, if the value is close to zero, it means that the model does not fit the data well. What is the R square value that we are getting? We are getting a R square value of 0 0.72 implying that 72% of the variation in housing price, I repeat, 72% of the variation in housing price is explained by the 13 independent variables that we have taken in the model. So 72% is a good number, which automatically means that 100 minus 72% would be around 28%. 28% of the variation in the dependent variable is not accounted for by the model that we have built. So with this, I have come to the end of today's video. As you can see here, what have we done? We have built a linear regression model. We have assessed the performance of the model and we have generated the predicted scores for a linear regression model. I hope you have liked this particular video. I request you to subscribe to my channel, like and share my videos. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Have a great day.